All right. Max and Mike of the Arkells joining us here at 94.9 The Rock. Rally Cry. It's Rally Cry Eve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, give birth to the baby. That's right. Say. So I just want to say, you know, like last summer, the big, you know, the rally, the, you know, 20,000 people, Tim Hortons Field. Some people might take some time off after that. <laughs> You know, me, you know, we had a good peak and now, but not you guys. No, we like the work. You know, I, the most gratifying part of the job is like writing a song and finishing it. Cause that seems like an impossible task when you're, when you're, when you're doing it, you're like, are we ever going to figure this thing out? Right. And then being able to play it live and have people maybe sing it back to you and dance and smile. And so, uh, we just want to kind of keep recreating that feeling cause it's, it's a really good feeling. And the writing process for this album uh, was like, did you guys just start right away? Like, uh, like we, after the last tour, is that? Yeah, we've been hacking away since last year. I mean, yeah, basically, we, you know, knocking came out, and then over the summer, the demos sort of started flying around. We started kind of getting some ideas together, and then People's Champ was the first one we got to. That's right. And I heard you talk about, and I think we talked about it on the phone, too, about how you guys are semin- sending demos to each other via your phones now. Like, it's <laughs> how, I, I always talk about how the industry has changed, like, mm-hmm. the economics of the industry, but, like, writing songs has changed, too. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a certain charm to getting in a room together, and, and, and we've done that before when it comes to preparing to go into the studio. But f- there's also something kind of awesome about you know, sending over a really rough uh, voice note that I did at my, on my piano at home, sending it to Mike and letting him sort of sit in his underwear at home and play guitar along to it for a while. And just being able to like simmer in those ideas is, is really creatively like a liberating feeling. It's like, you don't have four guys hovering over you. Like, what do you got? What do you got? Which is especially nice when you're wearing underwear in the studio. (laughs) Is that part of the four guys around you? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's in their underwear. You guys are just doing this red hot chili peppers thing. Just socks. socks. You know, just socks while you make music. (laughs) Uh, But so it's interesting. So would you feel pressure when you're in the room together? Like, does it like to, to, I don't know, to be different, to be better. I I mean, Again, sometimes there's like a, an alchemy and there's like a magical moment where everything just sort of gels. But also it's like, as bands know, it's like sometimes when you're jamming, everybody is not really listening to each other. You're just sort of like <laughs> thinking about what your own instrument's doing. Right. So when you have a little bit of distance from it, and this is it. It's like ultimately we are a five-piece band. This is all about teamwork and group work and how do we get the best out of each other? And that is sort of the question we're always asking ourselves. And we're also, and that changes too. That can change from record to record. It's really about being aware of, of each other and, and you know, how to make interesting music on the, more on the business side of things, you guys seem very aware of coming to my office. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, yeah. seriously, I got I want to give you full kudos for the, the marketing of this album <laughs> has been unlike anything I've ever seen in like 20 years working in radio oh, wow, watching. Thanks. And, and I, I mean, in the most complimentary, like, I, has it been, did you sit down in an office and say, okay, <laughs> Like, okay, we're going to, here's the things you, that karaoke night, the pop-up karaoke sure. night, you ran, like, okay, so karaoke night, you did the billboard with the 800 number. Yeah. Tell me somebody pitched an Tell infomercial. The, 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 well, the billboard <laughs> happened in Seattle, yeah. the, the, the conversation over Pat, over Pat Ty. So. Yeah. We were, we, there's a Thai restaurant called Thai Tom in Seattle, which always gets the juices flowing. It's just, <laughs> okay. it's just an amazingly inspirational place. But yeah, we were all just sitting around and just, you know, we had, we had done the the sort of pop up show for People's Champ, and then we were like, we should we gotta have some more ideas for each of the songs. We wanted to make each one special. Interesting. You know, you spend a lot of time making the music, so you want to get give each one its shot. So that one, I think the idea was just kind of in the song. It's sort of about the the political discourse in America, which and and sort of there's an image of these like billboards with scary messages on them. So. That kind of connected this idea, like maybe we could tease the song, kind of blur this line between physical and the the digital world and telephones, which are like kind of now archaic technology to like actually call someone on the phone. It's like only if you're calling the government or like your grandmother, it's like those are like the two times you use it. So, yeah, it 
it really ended up being super fun. And we learned a lot about putting up billboards and setting up 1-800 numbers yeah, and all we these were things. Like, we, we, we felt we needed to do it in America. So we called up our friend Donnie who puts on shows in Buffalo. Like, Donnie, do you know anybody who puts up billboards? He's like, I think I got a guy. And then it turns out the guy's a big Arkells fan. So he gave it to us basically for free. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then Mike was like, found this website that offers 1-800 numbers that you can pay for. And then when we uh, put up the, the graphic of the billboard, we the, the phone lines immediately got jammed. Crashed. And it, yeah. yeah. And then, crashed 800 numbers. And then got so an email <laughs> from them at the same time, like, your numbers are astronomical and, like, forward me to, like, a page Sorry. of, like, a terms of service and all this stuff. Oh, and so, like, like, all of a sudden it's, like, it's going to cost you three times as much basically. because they, yeah. you, we didn't expect this many calls. Yeah, but they helped us out, and now, so then... It, you know, I think everybody who wanted to get through got. And it's become a end. bit of a tourist attraction in Buffalo. People are going to the sign, taking photos. I'm sure. It. Yeah, I saw that. I yeah. saw that. Well, <laughs> most 800 numbers in Buffalo are for like uh, Gambino, Celino uh, and Barnes, Celino and Barnes. That's yeah. it. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was going to say Lockport Gambino, but that's yeah. uh, that was. A, I think that's a car lot. Uh, but th- th- that leads me to my next thing. You got you. I don't know a ba- another band that has the accessibility to their fans that you do, or their fans have accessibility to you. Is probably a better way of saying it. Is that? I don't want to say, is that something that you guys have consciously done or have you just had, it's just happened? Yeah. I mean, I think for, we always just put ourselves honestly just in the shoes uh, of music fans and it's not hard because I know what it's like to be rooting for a band or to be obsessed with a band and to be really interested in like what the band thinks of this and that. And so I just go, Oh, do you think people would be interested in like singing karaoke with us? Cause there's a lyric about singing karaoke in the song yeah. And it's going to cost, it's not like, these aren't expensive marketing ideas either. They're just kind of fun. And so it's like, and I just kind of put myself like, oh man, if like the Arcade Fire ever did a karaoke night, I'd probably want to be there because right. it, it would probably be awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just, you know, that's the, we're always thinking in those terms where it's like, what would just be a fun memory? Because at the end of the day, we're artists and we're entertainers. And our job is to provide memories for people, really. It's and moments, I, right? It's, it's moments, capturing right? moments. Yeah. And, and I think when you think about, you know, going to a favorite show. What makes a show great? It's not because they finished with their big song. It's because they did something cool in the opening song or they walked on stage to a certain song that they liked or they brought up a fan on stage or, you know, it's like those little things add together to make something special. And for us, it's like, that's been our whole career. It's never been one thing that, you know, moved the dial in a massive way. It's always been just a collection of little things. Well, I, it's, it looks like a, a really uh, coordinated campaign. It looks uh, very professional. It looks uh, amazing. Good. It's been great. I, I, my, I, 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 somebody, I thought maybe there might be like a rally cry uh, infomercial. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, maybe. Late, buy yeah. some time late at night, you know, and sure. you know, yeah. have them, you know, they, buy one, get two, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I thought it might work, you know. Hey, that's for the next record. Next record. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Uh, are you want, are you charging for this consulting? Yeah, yeah. May, just I, send the bill. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I work for the same people that, with the eight hundred number. Uh, there you <laughs> go. I'll make sure to charge you. Up. Can I? I the last uh, the first single uh, uh, for uh, Relentless. Yeah, for Relentless. I, can I play something for you here? Sure. I, didn't, I didn't tell the guys I was going to do this. I should have set this up properly, but. You uh, got the sample. You have never used a sample before. Never, a song. yeah. So can you tell us? I, I, I've you told on the radio special when we played the song. That's right. Yeah. On on ninety four nine The Rock. You sounded great on the air, by the way. Thank uh, you. you. You told the story of of the artist. His name is Chico. Yeah. Okay. So can you just t- re- revisit it while I get yeah, this? Of on course. Yeah. So typically, um, so. My dad showed me this song by the South African artist named Chico. And my dad listens to a lot of different music, and he's always showing me new songs that is getting him going. And um, and I, I loved it. And I immediately, it was one of those songs, because it was sort of instrumental in yeah. nature, that I just sort of started singing over top of. And then I sent it to Mike, and he chopped it up like he was a hip-hop producer. And we listen nice. to a lot of hip-hop, and we always admire the way they're able to take old soul samples and recreate them into something brand Amazing. new. And uh, that was like the beginnings of the song. Um, and you know, lyrically, the song, um, the song's chorus comes from a conversation that Mike and I had with uh, Paul from the Tragically Hip, yeah. and his time reflecting on being in a band with Gord and how fearless and curious Gord was, and how even when he was sick, he wanted to tour because yeah. that he that's that's what he was so passionate right. about. And he said Gord was relentless like a dog on a bone. And I was like, and that's most of uh, the good lyrics in Arkells are me talking to somebody who's smarter than me and then ripping them off. So, so, do, do you write them down or just immediately oh, go? Oh, no, I have a, a note on my a phone. Take a voice notification you right know, away? No, I have a note on my phone with yeah, all the lyrics from like the last So this years. is what it sounds like. I'm just going to play it off of this. Just, right? This is what it sounds like. 
And I'm, I'm going to say the next thing, and it mean it in the in the most. I know where you know, know, you know where I'm going because I did it right away with when the universe when the rep sent it to me. Oh yeah. So you heard this. No, no, I know. Is this the Macarena? This is the Macarena. Yeah, yeah. it has that syncopated yeah, thing. Yeah, I guess I, as soon as I heard it, I was like, so. I, I wonder I which one came out first, the Macarena or... I think the Macarena maybe came out first. I think uh, the Chico song's from 99. I, I think, think you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, I wanted it's to... It's pretty different, though. I mean... I, I, it is, but it's just, it's reminiscent. You're right. It is it's reminiscent. It's not like one of those things where there's going to be like a, a lawsuit. Sure. But it just has that, has the same vibe. And well, I was it has like a world music kind of thing yeah, to it. Yeah, absolutely. I was just wondering if there was a dance that's going to go with Relentless. <laughs> hey, if somebody wants, it'd be like the Kiki, do you love me dance? Like yeah, every, if it goes viral, like challenge, challenge, the Kiki right? challenge. Uh, we, we encourage that. Uh, for if sure. anybody has like a particular dance that can go to it. But I mean, for <laughs> us, it's like, and that I think as musicians, it's like, the, the trick is how do you keep things fresh and interesting? Because if you keep making the same record over and over again, people are going to not care and we're yeah. not going to care. Yeah. You know, like that's most important is that. And so when we heard that, that song, we're like, Oh, this is sort of like, sounds kind of foreign and it is foreign, but also sounds kind of familiar. It's got that familiar feel. Yeah. So, um, it was a really awesome exercise as, songwriters to, to be able to build something that we didn't necessarily start with. Yeah, it's it's different. It's a different way of writing. And yeah, you know, the old thing, you have your whole life to write your first album, sure. right? And then you you, you, find, you you gotta be creative and you find different ways. You guys are about to head out on the road. Yeah. And uh, this is... F- a lot of albums to choose from now. Oh, uh, right. Set list is hard, man. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Set list. Like I'm a Pearl Jam guy. I, they change it up every night. I I've know. seen them like 35 times and they, you never know what you're going to get. And that's why people go to so many Pearl Jam fish, same kind of thing. You, know, sure. you never know what you're going to get. Like, are you, what are you guys going to go out with? Do you know like, how many figure, songs? We got to figure that out. I mean, it starts Saturday, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the, the, we'll have a little bit of time to build up. Uh, we're, we're opening, you're opening for, right for St. Lucia States. and it'll yeah. be actually good because we'll get to put a few new songs from the record into the set and really feel it out. And then we're going to the Europe, yeah, Europe to headline. And that's when we'll really have to yeah. dig in to see what makes sense in the set list. But I'm actually ex- excited because I feel like we all could use something to freshen up the set list at this point. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. yeah. There's so many songs to play and people want to hear these things. Well, when's right? this thing coming up? Uh, I, I, I mean, I can play clips of this on the radio tomorrow. Okay. But this isn't live. The, the, no, no. Okay, the, cool. This is the video is, uh, we'll just put together whenever. Okay. We'll awesome. get it out as soon as possible. Well, we're, if you could save this next part for tomorrow. Sure. Oh yeah. Well, we won't put this up at all. No, go ahead. No, no. Just this next part oh, is yeah. that, uh, we're announcing our Canadian tour tomorrow. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. And we're really excited about it. Um, one of our favorite bands, and that we and they put out one of our favorite records of the year, Lord Huron. Yeah, yeah. They're opening the whole oh, tour. Wow. And uh, the Toronto show is going to be at Scotiabank. I was going to ask what size venue. That's yeah. amazing. So yeah. it should be good. That's amazing. Yeah, it's going to be February 16th. Because I think well, the first time you and I talked, you were playing Cops for the first time, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, the announce, you know, and then before the, ra- before, before the rally, yeah. we talked. And now mm. Scotiabank. Yeah. It's got a feel pretty good yeah the Leafs had to clear out their Saturday night for us <laughs> you're doing a Saturday night Saturday yeah. night Scotiabank yeah. that's pretty cool I'm gonna play that tomorrow for sure awesome yeah. <laughs> so you do tonight like at 10 o'clock or something yeah we'll announce it at 10 a.m. yeah okay I'll, I won't take you guys but I know you got, got a lot of work to do yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um I'll let you I'll leave you guys on this so I, w- I was talking to the Dirty Nil the oh, other yeah, day. Old friends of and ours. I talked to Monster Truck and yeah. mm-hmm. something about Hamilton. Like, what's in the water out there? <laughs> Good question. There's some really great music coming out of Hamilton right now. There is, yeah. I think the guys in the Trues have moved out there. Yeah, a couple of them yeah. are out there. Yeah, with them, yeah. Yeah, you guys, like, what? what is it? Now, you're Toronto originally, yeah, right? Yeah, we're all and from you, Southern Ontario, actually. Yeah. And then we've, we've, the band met in Hamilton. Met in Hamilton, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, is there something about the is there uh, something about the uh, the creative juices out there? Or is it the steel? I, I, <laughs> you know what? I would say that because there's a lot of talented musicians that go out and tour and leave the city and, like, really, you know... Uh, are on the grind. Yeah. I think um, we're, we're constantly inspired by the other artists. Yeah. They're like, oh man, they're good. Like when, when you're around good stuff, it makes you want to be better. Yeah. So absolutely. I think that that really helps in like our work ethic and wanting to be great yeah. is, is being around really good people. So I'm going to leave you with something that, you know, you're probably not going to be comfortable with, but I'm going to do it anyway. Cause <laughs> I'm very selfish. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, no, uh, Toronto, Hamilton, Toronto versus Hamilton. couple things. Oh, okay. questions. <laughs> okay. Cause now you're going to piss people off somewhere. Sure, of course. Sure. Uh, uh, Hess village versus queen West. Um, 
I mean, I think people even in Hamilton would say Queen Queen Street West. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Hess Hess kind of lost its shine a little. It's bit. Lost a little but bit. It's, it's, com- not it's what coming. It used to be right. I think it's coming back. Yeah, there's yeah. some good spots. Yeah. 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 All right. Burlington Skyway versus the Bloor Viaduct. Oh, what is the Bloor Viaduct? I don't. Even that's know. The, oh, so you not you never oh, go to the over East the End. Over, that's over the Don Valley Parkway. Oh, I do like that. Yeah, that's uh, a big one. It's a hundred years old today, actually. Really? Yeah, really? it is one hundred years old. I will today. go with the Burlington Skyway though. Yeah, me too. Uh, Dundurn Castle versus Castleoma. Oh, I kind of like. I, I I like Dundurn Castle. Castleoma has like a like a something weird about it. Castleoma doesn't know what it is. It's not know? a real you castle, know? first of all. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like a, a. I guess probably Dundurn Castle is also a really rich guy's house, but. Do you it's know like what I re- so far back. Do you know what I really mean? like? You guys are really thinking about yeah. this. You're actually yeah. indulging me. Thank you. No, <laughs> I, I couldn't even give you an answer. <laughs> it's a tough one. That's a tell you. Yeah, they have know. Blue Blood Steakhouse now inside um, inside Castle Loma. Oh, they do? Interesting. It's very expensive. I've never I can been. Imagine. Blue Blood. I'm, I'm up for a freebie, though. Yeah, listen. <laughs> sponsor the show. <laughs> yeah. uh, Today is presented by exactly. Blue Blood Steaks <laughs> in the heart of Castle Loma. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Nathan Phillips Square versus Jackson Square. <laughs> Santa Mountain Race is Jackson Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackson Square. <laughs> <Kinda sick>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like this game, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hamilton Mountain versus the mountain at Canada's Wonderland. Oh, <laughs> Hamilton Mountain. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Every time. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't um, like rides, concession. Yeah. Let's, let's rock out <laughs> on concession. <laughs> I'll leave you with a highway question. Okay. The Link versus the DVP. Oh. All right. Um, you know what? I'd say the Link... Oh. The only because the DVP it just brings me back to trauma of sitting in traffic. Oh, it's the worst. It's really any time of day is terrible. So I can't get behind that highway. But I mean, <laughs> I can't get behind yeah. that highway. Sentences you never thought you'd say. I can't get I behind, can't that, get behind that, highway. that highway. Yeah, the link. <laughs> I'm, I'm more into the link. Yeah, and yeah. it's named after Lincoln Alexander. <laughs> right. Good you know. dude. Yeah, great dude. Yeah. Yeah, who's Don Valley? <laughs> no, I'm just I, kidding. I, I guess it's a, a valley. Some, yeah. I think someone named something Don. We'll have yeah. to look that up. Actually. I was first name was Don. Yeah, maybe Don. Don was a good guy. Maybe like, hey, Don, we're just gonna name the valley after <laughs> yeah, you. That's get cool. Some historical freaks. Guy. Why do the Arkells hate? Hey, hey, the hey Don Mr. Valley's. Don, Mr. Valley, Mr. Valley, Mr. Yeah. Valley, Mr. Parkway. Actually, yeah, yeah Mr. Parkway. Yeah, his middle name was Valley. Uh, guys, Arkells, uh, Rowling cries out. Uh, the, the tour. Thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, thanks for coming down. This is awesome. Yeah, no, it was good. It's fun. Thanks so much.